Hello, my name is Michael White and I am a physical therapist with Connections PT in our Holliston clinic. And today I'm going to talk to you about some of the most common running based compensation patterns that we see with recreational runners. Um, I am a level one and level two certified running gait analyst um, and I regularly treat runners in the clinic um, on the injury prevention side of things, as well as trying to uh, get them back out on the roads running after dealing with a certain injury. And so today we're going to talk about five or six different uh, common patterns that we'll see uh, frequently with runner based populations and how to potentially address or improve your running mechanics uh, to minimize your risk for injury. Uh, the first one we're going to start with is cadence. And cadence, it refers to the number of steps or foot contacts that you have per minute. Um, it, there is no set number of uh, steps per minute that is considered optimal. Uh, it can vary from one person to the next, but generally speaking, um, a lower number of foot contacts per minute results in increased time that you spend on the ground. And ultimately what that does is it requires more muscular demand and stress placed through the joints of your body. So uh, if we, for example, if we have a runner that makes only 120 or 140 foot contacts per minute, they are spending more time on the ground when they're running compared to somebody that has 160 or 180 foot contacts per minute. And so, um, with this particular um, person, what we'll do is we can either get them on the treadmill and um, either count the number of foot contacts that they have per minute at their desired running pace. Or what I like to do is I use a metronome app on my phone and I will try to sync up the number of uh, the contacts that they're having on the treadmill uh, to that app and determine where they currently stand. A lot of the um, techno advancements in technology, technology these days um, allows for um, our running watches to calculate that for us when we're out running. And so whenever I'm dealing with a patient, I will ask if they pay attention to that when they look at their data on their, their watch, whether it's a Garmin watch or an Apple watch. Um, or even some of the apps that you can use while you're running on your phone um, in order to get a general sense of uh, where they typically um, fluctuate in terms of their foot contacts per minute. Um, I typically work on increasing it above about 160 steps per minute. And uh, so for instance, if, they're, if I have a patient who's Foot contacts are 150 steps per minute on average. What I would do is try to work with them with their running on a treadmill, keeping them at their same uh, desired pace, but uh, use the use a metronome app on my phone or um, even Spotify um, has some playlists that you can choose a set number of steps per minute or beats per minute. Um, to try to then synchronize the, the foot contacts on the treadmill as they're running. And so in, to work on this, we generally try to shoot for either five or 10% increase from their current cadence um, to work on training, spending less time on the ground. Um, the, the next thing I, I'll talk about is um, overstriding. Probably one of the most common uh, compensation patterns that we see with runners. And overstriding is uh, when the foot contact on the ground is too far out in front of the rest of the body. So the foot is landing far out in front of the body relative to the knees, the hips, and the, the trunk of the body. And so when your foot lands further away from your body, it requires a greater demand on the muscles and places greater stress on the joints of your body. So commonly we'll have a runner that may say, oh, I'm dealing with some, some knee pain or my, my calf muscles get sore with running. Um, 
And that can be a result of landing further away from the body um, in, in that overstriding scenario. Uh, so this can go hand in hand with somebody who has a decreased cadence or foot contacts per minute um, where they're trying to extend the length of their stride every step that they take and they might not be making as many foot contacts per minute. And so what we'll try to work on with this particular person is landing um, their foot closer to the body. I call, it, I call it more of like a stacked position of the foot underneath the knee, underneath the hip, and underneath the torso. And so we'll work on some drills, whether it be practicing some marching um, in the clinic to, to address that. The next um, compensation pattern we'll talk about is um, collapsing. Um, and this can occur at the hip or at the knee um, or even the pelvis uh, where there's a falling or inward rotation of the, the hip or knee, um, which will place greater stresses on the joints of our body. So um, what we'll work on with this particular person is trying to increase their hip mobility and their hip strength, probably also tie in some core strength to uh, prevent that collapsing inward. And sometimes if it's, um, if we're working on some drills on the treadmill, it's more of trying to envision that your knees are driving straight ahead um, and trying to prevent them from collapsing inward or maybe rubbing against each other as you're running. Um, this typically, the collapsing typically occurs in the, the stance phase of the running cycle. So as your foot contacts the ground, then the knee might fall inward or your opposite pelvis will drop down as a result of some weakness um, in, the, in the whole chain of ankle, knee, hip, and pelvis. And the next compensation pattern we'll talk about is the bouncer. So with this person, what, we're, what we tend to see is a lot of vertical movement up and down. Um, running, we wanna work more at the uh, propul propulsion of the body forward. And with a bouncer, they're, they're doing more of the vertical motion. Uh, motion. So um, with this person, uh, they may report more calf pain and tightness. Um, and this could be because they're, they're just stressing the, the calf muscles more than activating their, their hip muscles and the glute, the gluteal muscles, which um, help to push our body forward with running. So with this person, we would try to work on some form-based uh, drills, maybe doing some, some marching or driving of the knee when, when leaning against the wall to really feel the hip muscles activate. Um, some, some other cues that we'll use are to imagine running low to the ground, but keeping an upright posture. Um, and uh, some visual cues maybe we'll use are to, to try to focus straight off in the distance and not see a particular object going up and down in terms of your, your view out in front of you um, in order to correct some of that. Uh, the next individual or compensation pattern that we'll talk about is a glute amnesiac. So this is somebody who tends to run more so upright, maybe even a little bit leaned backward with running. And this is somebody who's not really recruiting their hip muscles to um, propel them forward. And so uh, with, with the running with typical running form, what we would like to see is a slight forward lean um, from, from the ankles, um, which um, activates the whole back side of the leg in terms of muscles of the, the glutes um, and the calf muscles to, to propel them forward. Um, and so leaning forward will help to reduce their step length 
and improve their efficiency with running. Um, a, one verbal cue that I'll give patients with this is to almost imagine like you're running into a strong wind. So in order to kind of combat that, that force fighting against you, you try to lean into it. And that tends to work pretty well for people. And the last uh, compensation pattern we'll talk about is a weaver. So this person tends to cross their foot over like the midline. So if we take a line and split ourselves into equal left and right halves of the body, um, what happens when their foot contacts the ground is it kind of the right foot will kind of cross over into the left side or vice versa, left will cross the midline towards the right side. This person might occasionally catch the foot or the knee um, as they're running. And similar to the uh, collapser, what we'll try to give them for cues is to try to keep the knees apart from each other um, when you're running to drive the knees forward and back using, using some of the hip muscles to, to get activated and, and prevent that. Um, for somebody who likes to spend their time running outside, either on the roads or maybe running laps at a track, I will give them more of a visual cue to work on. So if it's out on the roads, um, if you're running against traffic, say, there's typically a painted white line on the, on the road. And what you can do is um, maybe line up your, your right foot directly on that line. And then the left foot tries not to cross over and touch that line as you're running. Um, and if you like to run on a track, what you can do is the same thing. Um, choose either your left or right foot to land directly on the lane line um, and then keep the other foot from, from uh, crossing over into that painted line. Uh, I like to have one foot on the line as opposed to straddling the line because the straddling can sometimes get a little bit difficult to um, tell if you're really truly um, making that proper correction. And with the running cycle, we need to work on um, taking a look at our mobility of our joints, the strength of our joints, and our tolerance to withstand the forces that are required with running. And the running cycle is all single leg contact on the ground and uh, the energy demands or the force demands that are placed on our body when one single leg is on the ground is a roughly two and a half times our body weight. So um, it's important to work on trying to get our joints flexible, but also trying to get our joints strong enough to um, prevent any of these patterns from developing and then working on some more uh, progression of strength training into um, plyometrics which would include some, some hopping, whether it be single leg or double leg. Um, jumping rope is a great way to work on um, testing your, your muscles and your joints ability to um, withstand those forces placed on the body in order to continue to run pain-free and healthy. Thank you.